What's up, guys? I know it's been a while, but I'm back. Alright, so, first of all, I want to start off telling everybody, Happy New Year, Happy I hope you all had a great holiday. I know it's I know it's already February, but it's been that long. So I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year. <laughs> I don't know if it's been that long or not, but if so, Happy Halloween. <laughs> um, so last we talked, and like things were, you know, really hectic, but uh, things have actually settled down, and I'm kind of gotten in a a routine, and everybody is doing pretty well. But I will um, get to my mother and my grandmother in a minute. But first I have some cool news. Well, in my opinion, it's cool. So, I started DDP Yoga about... I want to say... About... 10 months... No, sorry, hang on, give me a second. Yeah, about 10 months, I'll say. And when I started it... I was 298 pounds. I've been going to the doctor a lot recently, like, just, you know, because I've gotten new doctors, so I had to get checkups and all that stuff, and get things situated. And it turns out, every time I go to the doctor, which has been, like, sometimes it was, like, week to week, other times month to month, uh, I have been constantly losing, even through the holidays, because I thought I was gaining through the holidays. But even through the holidays, because I've been pretty much trying to stay away from most uh, fast foods and most uh, frozen foods. And I was 298. I am now down to 267. So, this may not be a lot, lot, but 30 pounds, in my opinion, is a great thing. To, you know, almost in less than a year, I've lost about 30 pounds. So, I am now setting a goal. I will be down by this time next year. I'll be down to 200 at least. And I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling good, feeling better. Uh, I'm keeping, like, I've been going every three months to get a testosterone injection. And that's doing a world of good. Because uh, my testosterone level, if it's not, if I don't get the shot, it goes down. And when it goes down, I, st I feel it. Like, I feel unmotivated. I feel very down. I just feel very, just tired. Uh, very tired. And then I get the shot, and all of a sudden, it's like, bam! I'm completely a whole different person. <laughs> and it's, been like, my testosterone level. I started this about, uh, four years ago. Because they found out my testosterone level was in double, di double digits. Like, 80s to 90s, and a male testosterone level is supposed to be 50 to, or I'm sorry, 500 to 900, at least. So, it was way down. It was, like, critically low, and before they fixed it, I was down. I was feeling very depressed, very, very depressed. I was always tired. I was, like, just, I was not doing anything. And I gained weight because of it. I believe that it's because of the, it was partially because of the testosterone that I gained so much weight. And I've been keeping up with the testosterone. And like, as soon as I started taking it, like when it first started, my whole like fa my whole my whole like shape of my face changed, my body type changed. It was like I went through puberty at about 21 years old. And I just, I felt so different. I felt one, wonderful. That's the only way I can say it. It felt freaking amazing. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> I didn't mean to, like, go off about that. But, yeah, like, I just, like, can't believe, like, how different it felt. Like, when I got the testosterone. So I've been keeping up with that every three months. I've been getting it. And I've been trying to be a little more active. Like, instead of staying here on my days off, I'll try and go out. But, in a small town, can't drive, not very much you can do. But, I'm still doing it. I'm still 30 pounds down. Haven't, I have not gained a single pound in over 10 months. I think that's a damn good thing to, you know. I'm going to brag about that for <laughs> a long time. Until I gain a pound, then I'm just going to shut up about it. <laughs> uh, but my main thing is, like, my, uh, I can cook. I never really learned, but it's, you know, I, I can do eggs, I can, you know, so I, I can do, you know, fry meat up on the stove, 
I put stuff in the oven. I mean, I can cook. It's not that hard. But, I don't like to cook. <laughs> not just because of my eyesight, but just, I just don't like to cook. So, my aunt, on her days here, she decided, she decides to cook for the week. And I'm like, why not? So she'll cook stuff. And then my second cousin, who lives, like, basically, like, right through the woods, it's like, right there. She will even make us, like, homemade stuff for the days that my aunt doesn't make stuff for. And, like, they both, like, home cook. They don't do frozen crap. Which, before I started, like, with my weight loss, I was eating constant frozen stuff. Like, I still eat the occasional frozen product. Like, if, when I, if everyone else ate and I just haven't eaten yet... Instead of eating the leftovers, I'll just grab, like, something out of the freezer. Like, I don't do it often. Like, I do it maybe once a month, if that. But it's just if I'm really hungry and just... I don't want to eat their leftovers. And as I say, you know, oh, it's for everybody. But I like to save it for them because I know that they'll eat it. My grandmother and my mother, I know they'll eat it. I like to save it for them. But I've been pretty much staying away from the frozen food. And it's doing a world of good. And I have cut out soda. I have not had soda in over a year. I'm like, the other day, I poured my grandmother, also drank a soda. I poured her a glass, and like, there was like a little sip left. So I just took a little sip, and I was like, ew. It doesn't even taste good anymore. It tastes like syrup. It's, and honestly, that's what it tasted like. It tasted like syrup. And I just, I had no interest in it. I guzzled water, and just, I wanted water. That's pretty much all I drank is water, and if I really want to, I'll get like a... Uh, not much better than soda, I know, but, like, the, I'll scoop a thing of iced tea into the glass. Like, a little teaspoon of iced tea. Ah, uh, give me one second. Yes? <laughs> Are you fighting with a cat? Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> She's fighting with a cat. My mother is playing with a cat. Anyway, Molly, lower your voice. <laughs> Uh, so I forget where I was. I think I was talking about frozen foods. But anyway, speaking of my mother, her, she, she went from uh, being in the hospital, having her stroke uh, almost a year ago. It'll be a year in f late February, February 20th. The doctor telling us she's not going to make it to actually, sorry, I heard a weird sound from actually being well enough that not only is she not in a wheelchair but she's not only not walking with a walker anymore she's walking with a cane and they're actually starting to get her to walk without the cane a little bit. I'm not sure how it's going to work but hey, she's, right now we have her up getting her own stuff and she's doing a great job so she's doing well my grandmother is about the same hasn't really changed she pretty much like lays in bed and gets up, has coffee has a cigarette, and then goes back to bed. And that's what she wants to do, and uh, she's like, she's almost, uh, almost 80 years old, and I figure, you know what, that's what she wants to do. I'm not gonna force her. Uh, but she had her stroke three years, a little over three years ago. And my mom had her stroke a year ago. And I had my stroke the day <laughs> my grandmother had her stroke. <laughs> nah, um, I love being here. Like, taking care of them is not all that bad. It can be a little difficult at times because they kind of, they, you know, my grandmother sees me as Corey, her grandson. My mom sees me as Corey, her son. And they kind of don't like to see me as Corey, the guardian or caregiver. So they kind of try fighting me on things. And then sometimes I'll be like, you know what? Fine, do it. I don't care. And then, of course, watch them while they do it. And then once they figure out they can't do it, Corey. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's honestly not that bad. Uh, I am not the neatest person in the world. And my aunt is a clean freak. So her and I kind of, like, don't, we butt heads on occasion. <laughs> but that's not even that bad. Like, I'll leave, uh, like, I'll make, like, spaghetti or something for the girls, and, like, there'll be a little sauce on the counter. And she'll come in and, like, have to, like, she'll immediately, I swear, she, like, has a camera in this house. She'll walk in and immediately go to that and, like, start scrubbing it, and I'm like, really? 
like, man, that's not horrible. Uh, but I've been really thinking about it in this past, like, year, two years, three years even since Grandma had her stroke, because Mom has spent a lot of her time here before her stroke. And it has really helped me grow up a lot. Like, like I said, I'm not a neat freak, but before Mom had her stroke, I always felt like, oh, God, if anything happens to Mom, I might as well kill myself. I, mean, I, I, have, I have no life without Mom. But in the past <coughs> year, I've really taught myself that <sighs> as hard as it would be to be without her, I am actually a man now. I can actually, I'm helping her now. I'm cooking, I'm, like I said, I'm not that good of a cook, but I'm cooking on occasion. I'm helping take care of them. I'm wiping butts, which I never thought I'd be able to do. And it's just, I'm seeing, like, I'm, I'm all grown up. <laughs> as much as I fought it, I am all grown up now. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it feels good. Like, I'm paying my own bills. I'm doing all my own stuff, and it's just... It feels good. And it just makes me feel like, like I, like I said, I love those two so much. But if I ever left, I know I could I could live on my own if I had to. Uh, so yeah, that's those two. But while I have been here, um, one thing I have been doing a lot of is I've been a bit of a couch potato watching a lot of TV. Uh, one of my favorite shows is How I Met Your Mother. I found it a, f a couple years ago after Scrubs went off the air, because Scrubs was my all-time favorite show. It was witty, it was smart. Scrubs was the only show that I thought could make you <laughs> burst into tears crying and then laugh your ass off in the same two seconds. That's the best way I describe Scrubs. Is it, it was the best dramatic comedy I've ever seen. And then uh, I was like, once that ended, I was like, oh great, now what do I do? I have no more shows. And I stumbled across How I Met Your Mother. And I watched like the first three seasons in like a day. Thank you, Netflix. And I instantly like fell in love with it. It was as witty as Scrubs. I loved the uh, inside jokes. and It was amazing. Like, I love that show. And now that show is coming to an end in just five episodes. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. <laughs> That's going to be bad. Because I'm, I'm like, oh god, what am I going to do? Dude, now this show's going off the air. I have no shows left. But the creators are actually making How I Met Your Father. So I'm hoping it's not like a, like a spin-off. And I hope it is more like its own show. That's the chair, not my farting, by the way. But I'm hoping it is like its own show. Its own entity. And not like a spin-off of How I Met Your Mother. But I'm just... I'm giving the people who made... How I Met Your Mother, I really feel it's going to be a good show. So I'm hoping that can replace How I Met Your Mother. Because I need, I like having shows to follow. But I am very picky. Like Arrested Development, people loved. I didn't like it too much. I'm from the 90s generation. Seinfeld, Friends, Boy Meets World. Those were my, were my big shows growing up. And now I watch How I Met Your Mother, The Voice, X Factor, and <laughs> Days of Our Lives and General Hospital. I am really into soaps. I'm s say what you want about it. I don't care, but I love soap operas because you will never be as passionate about a show because you watch every week than you do when you watch it every day. Daytime soaps. You watch an hour a day. Think about this. You have your favorite show. You those characters you fall in love with just by watching them once a week. Imagine that when you're watching every single day. That is why I love the soap operas, because you fall in love with the characters, sometimes you love or hate the plots, and you just get really wound, like roped into their lives, and it's just, you become loyal because you watch these guys, these actors, these, act these actresses, busting their butts, and you really become loyal to them. Not just to the actors, but to the characters, to the couples. You really start to care about them. And it's like the pro wrestling fans. You will never meet an, anyone like pro wrestling fans. They're the most loyal, passionate fans you'll ever meet. And pro wrestling and soap opera fans go hand in hand. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Speaking of the voice and X Factor... I had gotten into them this past year because I uh, 
I listened to this band, Boyce Avenue. They do a lot of videos on YouTube, and I fell in love with them about a year ago, two years ago. And they did a video with this girl, uh, what was it, B, B, I'm trying to think of what they call her, B Miller, Beatrice Miller. And she was on, I believe it was, The Voice, or was it X Factor? One of those. The Voice. No. She was on one of those shows. I have a, I have a major brain fart right now. But, uh, I was like, well, you know, I like this girl. So I went back and I YouTubed her. And I watched all of her videos when she was on X Factor. It was X Factor. And I just, I really, I fell in love with this girl. She was so talented. And, and only 14 years old and she's like so freaking talented. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to check the show out. It looks good. It's not like an American Idol ripoff. It actually looks like a good show. I stopped watching American Idol after the second season. It was too much about appearances and, and it was just ridiculous. <laughs> but again, I digress. I'm digressing a lot tonight. Anyway, so I got watching X Factor and The Voice, and I fell in love with both those shows. And I actually found a few artists that I'm following now because of those shows. Uh, you guys should definitely look up. Her name is Ryan Page. R-I-O-N-P-A-I-G-E. Check out her stuff from X Factor. No, wait, was she on The Voice? I think she was on The Voice. She was on the... Wait, no, she was X Factor. Yeah, she was X Factor, too. Okay, sorry. When you watch two similar shows, it's kind of, you can't keep them. Especially when you watch two shows that both have teams of singers, you lose track of who's who. But, uh, so I felt like I really liked her, too, because she, you know, she had, was born with, like, her hand was, like, like, deformed, and she didn't let it define her. Like, her voice kicked ass, and it just did not matter how her hands were. She was an astonishing singer. I'm actually probably, if I remember, I'm going to post one of my favorite songs she did this year in the box below, where it's on the side now. I don't really, I haven't vlogged in a while, so I'm not really sure. But, so those two shows really, like, they kept me sane for a couple months. And, what was it? Another show I wanted to talk about. Oh, Late Night. Uh, I, before Grandma got sick, I never watched a lot of Late Night. Like, I think the first time I saw it was when Seinfeld went off the air, and Jay Leno talked about it, like, my mom was watching it, and I got caught up watching it. That was, like, the only, like, only time I actually really got into, like, the late night show, before my grandmother got sick. And now when I'm up here, when I'm here with her, I'll be like, like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed, I'll lay in bed, and I'll hear, you know, Jimmy Fallon and Jay Leno talking, and I'll chuckle. And then I hear him talking a little more, and I start laughing. Next thing you know, I'm sitting up in bed. <laughs> eating peanuts and <laughs> watching Late Night. And I have a lot of respect for both, uh, like, actually for all of the Late Night talk show hosts because they're all really funny. Conan O'Brien, I really, I get a kick out of him. I really like him. Uh, Jimmy Fallon, freaking hilarious. I love him. And Jay Leno, I have so much respect for him. Everything he's done, like, there's a lot of talking about the way he got into the, uh, late night talk, uh, program, There's, they say that, like, he wasn't the one that was supposed to be there, that, um, David Letterman, I think it was, was supposed to be the host, because that's who, uh, the predecessor wanted, but instead, Jay Leno was given the spot because of people he knew in the network or whatever, but the fact is, he, Jay Leno is a legend, he's hilarious, and there's no other like Jay Leno. And I'm actually sad to see him go. Because I know he like left a couple years, like a year or two ago. And Conan took over. But now it all worked out because Conan is now on a different network. A network that I feel like they, they appreciate him more and will respect him a little more than NBC did. No disrespect to NBC at all. I just think that uh, Conan be belonged on TBS, but uh, when they, when Jay Leno came back, I was like, okay, you know, I like that, you know. Yes, there was a whole all that drama, and I'm not really fond of drama. Says the guy who watched soap operas, but <laughs> um, 
uh, when he came back, I was actually really happy to see him come back. And now, he's passing the torch to Jimmy Fallon. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I can see that. This is good. This is good. I like this. And I feel like Jimmy Fallon is more like Jay Leno in a way. than Where Conan was his own entity. Where Jimmy Fallon, he has very Jay-like humor, I guess you could say. And... Of course, he had a better singing voice than Jay Leno, but sh <laughs> but Jimmy Fallon and Jay Leno both are like so talented, and like watching all the stuff with Jay and uh, Jimmy together is it's heartwarming. And see, can I? You have to imagine for Jimmy Fallon having Jay Leno passing the torch to him, it has to mean the world. You know, here's a guy that he, a legend in the field saying to you, giving you his show, saying, you know what? Here, you can do this. I know you can do this. Go nuts. Have fun. And that's just, that's so cool to me. That's so cool. So I'm, I'm going to be watching those shows a lot. And, nope. I thought my grandma was up. But, yeah, so like, t as you can tell, TV has been a big part of my uh, past year or so. <laughs> but nothing wrong with that. But I have been getting out. I've been really making sure I've been getting out. At least uh, twice a month, I'll go out to, uh, the t like, the only good bar in town. And, uh-oh, nine minutes left. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. And I'm back. Sorry about that. My battery went dead, and I didn't know it. And I'm back again. <laughs> I thought I was uh, recording over the video I was just making, and I was about to cry because that was like 15 minutes of video. But it wasn't. So anyway, as I was saying, I have been getting out. I, uh... Uh, I've been going to, sorry, I've been going to this, uh, the only good bar in town, and like, I'll go and I'll have a drink, sometimes with friends, sometimes I'll, uh, go alone, and when I go alone, it's like, it's like I said, it's a small town, so usually I have my cousin drop me off, I'll go in, and like this past weekend, it was actually kind of nice, because I was inside, you know, cooped up with every, you know, like everybody here. So this weekend I decided I was gonna go, I was gonna go out. Whether people wanted to go or not, I was going out. And I went to you know the bar and I had I mean, bought myself dinner, had dinner, talked to like a couple people that I knew from like when I went to high school. And the action, <laughs> the security there is a friend of mine from elementary school, which is really cool. And he's a cool guy. And he must think I'm a lush because every time I see him, I'm always like drunk. But he's a cool kid. He really is. Okay, the cat is there. Thought I was losing my mind. Hang on. Oh, can't see her. Hang on. Dumpster. <whistles> Dumpster. <whistles> yep. Yeah, she's not interested. She's more interested in her food. So, uh, yeah, I'll go and I, I had dinner. Went outside to the the uh, like sport bar tiki bar, tiki bar area, and it's like enclosed, so you can have it all year round. And it was actually really nice. I met up with this girl Brandy, who I've known all my life, and her and I like talked a bit. And uh, I ran into this other girl uh, that I knew from like I want to say junior high. She was like always she, was, she lived on my road, and I talked to her for a bit. And it was actually really cool, because like, I never really got to know her, I never really talked to her that much. And we ended up talking for like 15 minutes, I don't know. But it was actually really cool getting to know her. So, but, anyway, so I ran into a couple people. I ended up going home about 2 a.m. And took a cab home, and it's always the same guy, so I always like BS with him for a while. And got home, went to bed, like, actually I didn't go to bed. Got home, went online. And then went to bed. I go on this, uh, when, actually not just that night, but whenever I don't go out, I'm always on Second Life. And if you don't know what it is, it's this online world where you make avat like you make an avatar and you go around, you can voice chat with people. And I actually found this, like, this is mostly, uh, a chat area, but you can also type for people that just like to listen. And... I started going there a couple months ago, and at first I was just typing, and I was like, yeah, I don't really like my voice because it's so nasally, 
it always sounds like I have a cold, but they actually uh, kind of coaxed me into talking a little. It was just a comment here and there, and now I had to go in there and talk a lot. But I met a lot of cool people in there that have really helped me kind of come out of my shell a little bit. But I feel like they still, like, if I said something and they couldn't understand it because of my nasally voice and because I talk fast, I feel like they still want to say, hey, Corey, what, can, you, could, can you repeat that? I didn't really hear you. Which I'm trying to get them to tell me if they can't understand me, but... You know. Water. Uh, so I'm trying to get them to, like, you know, not be afraid to tell me if they can't understand me, but that place has been, like, a, a godsend to me since I found it. Uh, but yeah, like, that's in Second Life. And so Second Life is, like, it's kind of my real life right now. Where after I put mom to bed and grandma to bed, I'll go in Second Life for a while and just kind of hang out at my house in Second Life and watch some videos. Or, yeah. Alright, one second. Sorry. I'm saying sorry, I'm not even on the phone. See, that's what I mean. I'm used to audio stuff where... I'm, like, talking to people, so that's why I'm, like, talking as if I'm talking to a person right now, which I am. I'm talking to all my subscribers, so, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, Second Life, I go in there, and I'm going to my house for a while, or I'll go out and go into the area, the chat area, the voice chat area, where I always go, and I hang out there, or there's, like, I am people that I'm friends with, and it's, like, it's just a cool place, but they have a gambling area where you can, like, then you can buy Lindens, which is their currency, and then you can, like, spend it, like, on clothes and stuff. Well, I spent about, last month I spent about $100 for Lindens. $100 gets you about, I want to say, like, I want to say, like, 60000 50000 Lindens. And what I didn't spend on furniture or on clothes, I spent in gambling. Yeah, I get addicted, so I try not to gamble as much. But, it's like I said, Second Life has just been a godsend to me. And I love it. I seriously love that place. If it shut down tomorrow, I truly don't know what I would do. Uh, so that's when I stay in. <laughs> and that's when I'm not watching wrestling. And I'm still obsessed with wrestling. But there's a lot going on right now in wrestling, so it's a whole nother vlog that I'll probably try and do tomorrow night. But I will say that there's this new thing coming out called the WWE Network, and I can't wait. It is going to be amazing. Every pay-per-view from WCW, ECW, WWE, WWF. And if you don't know what those initials mean, then don't worry about it, because you won't. <laughs> but it's been just... I can't wait till that comes out. It's going to be amazing. Every pay-per-view from all those, like, every promotion that WWE has bought out will probably end up on the uh, WWE Network. It's kind of like Netflix for wrestling fans. It's the best way to describe it. But, yeah, so that's really all. I, you know, that's been my past couple months. And I hope you guys comment, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. And if you have Skype, send me an IM, and maybe we can talk on Skype. Uh, oh, one more thing, in the lady front, there's still no girl, I doubt there's going to be a girl for a, quite a while, but, hey, if any girls out there want to chat, <laughs> look me up. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you for, as always for watching, for caring, for subscribing, for not unsubscribing, unsubscribing, uh, and just thank you. Alright guys, hopefully we'll talk soon.